Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales from Outer Space. 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 And as always, I hope that you enjoy. New Engineers, written by Comrade H. Vi. Damn, feck, crap. Why am I swearing? Simply, I was fecked. First field deployment, and my ship got assaulted. Figuratively, of course. But a corvette is basically assaulted if there are at least ten photon torpedoes aiming for her bridge. Those pirates may launch a few quantum missiles, too. I'm not sure. My ship's sensors were fried because there were too many moving objects with hostile intent. We got out in one piece, as in no one died yet. But a ship? Well, I have no idea how or why we could have flown back to port. The engineer on board, a far cousin of mine, requested a transfer as soon as we docked. I'm done, he said. Not good enough, he claimed. Damn! I checked his smile. Top 8% of the course. Note that there was over a thousand other attendants and only 400 are allowed to graduate. So it means that you need to bust a lot of balls just to stay in the top 20. The old geezer called me up a few hours after docking. I took a call while sitting in the bridge. Well, because I was the last crew member who was both healthy and relatively sane. He was good news. He heard about my deployment and checked up on a few old friends. It turned out that there were not one, but two human engineers in this area. They were both graduated and unemployed, and they are eager to serve on board a space warship. Something about vengeance for their family due to pirate raids. We're gonna meet together in the old geezer's office. It's strange, really. He warns me about a few, um, quirky personalities of the two. One male, one female. The former can be said to be a vindictive bastard. The latter, well, uh, she never disagrees with him. Strange, indeed. But they are engineers. Good, and have some experience under their belt. Those humans put lots of effort into training, really. I heard that their engineering course is five years long, and they must serve on board a spaceship for at least six months before graduating. Oh, and in those five years, they also have to stay in space for at least three and join a basic combat training course. The combat course is taught by the Zule, the most feared and respected warriors in the galaxy arm, if not the entire galaxy. Paranoid again, I guess. Humans see threats everywhere and every time. Hell, I think some humans even consider a spray to be potentially dangerous. Right, I'm here. Ringing the bell in the old geezer's office. The door opens almost instantly. I look around to see the room for the first time. It's plain, to say the least. A matching set of desk, table, chair, and cabinet. Plain, creamy wall with nothing for decoration. Strange. My uncle is an officer, and his room is, uh... Let's just say it's colorful, okay? The old geezer greets me immediately. Welcome back, kiddo. I guess that you were baptized now, huh? Oh, uh, don't worry about the plainness of my room. It is not really my room, per se. I borrow it from my engineer, Jake. He likes keeping things uh, simple and efficient. And here are the two engineers I want to introduce. The male one on the left is Nguyen Kwang Min, and his friend, the female, is Tran Kim Mai. I never think that you guys have such difficult names to pronounce... Oh, we come from a different factions from that engineer Jake. Just call me Victor and her Minnie if you can't speak our real names. We're used to it. Is that fine? I think yes, our names are important, but if you can't pronounce it when needed, we're going to be as good as dead, and I still want to retire with a good pension and my lovely girlfriend here. The male engineer seems, uh, mature, I guess. His tone is friendly, but his body language is quite, uh, guarded. And cold. Looks like he's trying to make a wall between two sides. I'm not sure if it's a good idea or not, but at least their files are good. They graduate from the hardest school on earth with decent scores. Not top positions, but when it's most rigorous school and they're trained to deal with all situations, it is a very respectable outcome. However, my eyes linger a bit longer than needed on the female engineer. Instead of a military uniform like a colleague, or boyfriend, or mate, uh, I'm not sure, she wears a white apron over the black dress. 
The implant chip in my brain suggests that it's a branch of their culture. The outfit she's wearing is of a maid, a servant. I almost go fuzzy when knowing this. But again, they are human. Insanity is a part of their blood. If they are still sane, they will try to become insane. I just hope that they can fix my ship quickly. Well, it turns out that they not only fixed my ship, they also upgraded it from top to bottom, and I'm not sure if I can call the Suzui too class anymore. The outside and overall side are the same, but, um, the fixed and bare minimum in just a week. Please note that the standard is something like four weeks, maybe five or six, but that is only if you realize that the reactor is leaking. Well, my ship was the worst condition ever, and they fixed everything in eight days. And then they got bored or pissed because of the inefficiency. I'm not sure. They pulled the entire reactor out. Well, they did remove the cell first. They are crazy, but not stupid. Jiggling with every single piece before putting them back together. Somehow, the captain, who, who is me, by the way, can cut down the cost of a reactor cell by 12%, while the efficiency of the reactor is increased by 90%, or 85% in a combat situation. That's a real feat. The reactor is only 70% efficient at best case scenario, and they're still mad about it. Strange. But it would be better if they didn't use the cell case, which is hot like a Nova, to warm water for tea and coffee. Again, they said they got bored. They wanted to improve the cell case to limit the heat and energy lost. They didn't make it in time, but the male engineer did send the blueprint to a factory and earned a good chunk of credit of it. But the reactor done and still having three weeks left, they should have relaxed somewhere. After all, they're a male and a female, fertilizable and, uh, they're mates of each other, but, but no, they got bored again. This time, they messed with every system left on the ship. They attached some small deflators, like one used with the ground shock troopers, onto the reactor and warp drives, Something about limiting the shielding needed. Well, they were just five meters of concrete and steel before they did that. Seems like I can spend more credit on booze for my crew. Knowing that we got boarded last time by pirates, the female engineer ordered a pack of items from her homeland. Kinetic weapons, high rate of fire, and in the color of pure black of death. The M70 Gypsy. The female engineer called it. Using 20mm rounds and firing them at over 6,000 rounds per minute, they can provide access denied to an area or simply shred the targets to pieces. But the accuracy of each round is quite low. I wonder if 21 guns like it can do the job. For some strange reason, Victor, the male engineer, is not very satisfied with the laser turret. The no attack time is too long, and he fixed it because he was bored. After fixing the reactor, warp drive, yes, he got bored again. Something about making the pole shorter and another barrel onto the same turret. Yeah, I'm not sure if he's sane. I mean, he giggled like a girl when fixing it. It was three days ago when he finished fixing it. Apparently, he locked down the entire ship to make quality time with his girlfriend. Whatever that means, uh, I do not want to know. And today, a week from deployment, he called me to inspect everything. It seems that they also make some minor upgrades to the bridge, some software for recreational purposes, and a massage chair. I like that crap. I swear my navigator is purring like a cat now. And did I say they also install the fridge to store alcohol and soft drinks on the bridge? Yes, they made it once inside the wall. I scan through it, and I see at least 50 bottles, but 49 do not <coughs> exist. <coughs> but the grin on Victor's face and the skull from Meanie makes me feel uneasy. They told me the latest piece of upgrade. They were bored last night, and so they turned half the escape pods into combat drop pods, and they painted them pink with rainbows and unicorns. End of story. This is a special thank you to the one, the only, the legendary Erak Hino, who has become the only Tier 6 patron. I just want to thank the T5 patrons and channel members. Cam Maxwell, Casper Arnholtz, Australia the Dreamer, Trigan95, Pudigiol, Meridian117, Olivia, 
Jordan Buxbaum, Angry Marine, Albard and Gasta, and Barkey. Thank you very much. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed. There are links down below both to support this channel and for the author of this fiction. Anyways, I hope you all have a fantastic one, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.